Hey guys, this is Matt from BrushlessRCMotor.com uh, here to do an installation of a full set of ceramic bearings on my Duratrax Evader EXT2. Now Boca Bearings uh, sent me a set of full ceramic bearings, uh, their orange seal variety for on-road. And I'm going to go ahead and show you guys a process of installing those and show you the tools needed. Uh, first thing, I'll tell you what the kit includes. Uh, they have a 10 by 15 millimeter bearing. There's two of those. These are used for the differential. You also have some 5 by 10 millimeter bearings. There's eight of these. These are used for the rear wheel hubs as well as part of the transmission, top shaft and idler gear, all of that. I'll show you those here in a few minutes. And we also have some 3 16 by 3 8 inch ball bearings. There's four of these. These are for the front wheels. And I have one other bearing they sent me. This is a 5 by 11 by 4 millimeter bearing. And this is what I use in my 32 pitch spur gear upgrade. Um, they sent me this. This does not come in the kit. But they sent me this one because I uh, have one currently. And I want to go ahead and show you guys every uh, bearing swap here on the truck. So uh, to begin with, I'll go ahead and go over the tools we need. Uh, first thing, of course, you're going to need your multi-wrench that comes with the Evader. Going to need a 1.5 millimeter Allen wrench. This is to remove the pinion gear from the motor. Going to need a 2.5 millimeter Allen wrench. This is to remove the motor from the motor plate and the transmission. Going to need a small Phillips head screwdriver to remove some of the screws in the tight spots. Going to need a number two Phillips head screwdriver to uh, get to some of the tougher screws that are locked in tight. Uh, also need a flathead screwdriver and I use this to help pry out the old bearings. Uh, kind of, it, it helps to, uh, to actually push them out. You don't want to put a lot of pressure um, on any one part of the bearing. So if you use a flathead screwdriver you can kind of push them out evenly and avoid some problems. Also use a set of needle nose pliers and use this to remove the turnbuckles that are on the rear wheel hubs so I can get to those bearings and of course I like to use some Loctite when I reinstall everything after I'm done. I'm going to go ahead now and remove the wheels all the way around and we'll get to uh, the actual installation. Okay, I went ahead and removed all four wheels from the truck and the first bearings I'm going to swap out are for the front wheels. Uh, these bearings are actually located in the wheels themselves. Uh, best way to get out the front wheels from what I've seen uh, is basically to tap the wheel on a hard surface and one of the bearings usually pops right out, the outside bearing. Now for the inside bearing, this is where I use the flathead screwdriver. I try to push directly on the inner ring of the bearing and that one will pop out as well. And what I mean by the inner ring is if you look the actual ring, there's a ring there. If you apply direct pressure to that, um, it's not going to damage the bearing as you're getting it out. Now again, I'm swapping these bearings out with some better quality ones, but a lot of you guys might need to change wheels, what have you, so just try to put direct pressure on that inner ring and it should pop right out, not damage anything. Okay, these are the 3 16 by 3 8 inch size bearings and again, these things will go directly in where the old ones were. So you can just use your finger pressure on the wheels. They're pretty forgiving on these and just make sure you push them in all the way. Okay, now these direct back on the axle and followed by your lock nut. These ceramic bearings that I've got are uh, dry, no lube needed whatsoever. Um, these are for on-road, so these things actually uh, have the capability of rotating about 50% faster than the stock steel bearings. Uh, it's not saying that you're going to get 50% more speed out of them, but they have a lot less resistance than the stock bearings, and these things are um, a lot easier on your motor, ESC, and you get a lot better performance out of them. So these things pretty much will spin uh, <laughs> a lot longer than the stock wheels as well. So, um, that is the front wheel. Now the back wheel is actually the wheel hub itself. Let me go ahead and reposition the camera a little bit and we'll get to that. 
Okay guys, I'm going to go ahead and swap out the bearings on the rear wheel hub. Uh, to do this, obviously you remove the wheel first, which I've already done, and the pin on the axle, which uh, the rear wheel mounts to. To do this, I use a set of needle nose pliers. Go ahead and apply pressure on one side of the pin, the other side of the axle, kind of diagonal, push, and then the pin will stick out all the way on one side of the axle. Uh, at this point, you got to make sure you're trying to apply direct pressure and uh, pull straight on the pin. Okay, so the pin comes out. Make sure you hang on to this. Put it off to the side. You'll need that to put your rear wheels back on. Okay, next thing you do is you go ahead, take the pliers again, grab a hold of the rear uh, cup uh, that's mounted to the wheel hub, and then go ahead and twist it forward. Once you twist it forward, it'll pop off the ball without damaging the cup. And then go ahead and make sure you pull that up out of the way. I like to just stick it back here behind my shock. Then I go ahead and pull the wheel hub forward, which releases my CV shaft. Now, if you're using dog bones, you're going to want to make sure to pay attention to the spring on either side of the dog bone. There will be a spring on the inside of the differential cup down here, as well as the drive cup on the axle. But since I'm using the CV shafts, I don't have to worry about those. That's one of the main reasons I upgraded to these. So these will pull directly out. At this point, you're going to have your bearing on either side of the wheel hub. Okay, to, do, to remove these, I use an Allen wrench, put pressure on the inside of the uh, opposite bearing. Okay, that pops out. Also, the spacer in between the two bearings will pop out and then it's just a matter of pushing the uh, bearing out on the opposite side. These all pop out fairly easily okay so you've got the two old bearings and you've got the wheel spacer. You can go ahead and get rid of the old bearings and I need two more of the five millimeter by ten millimeter bearings Okay, here's the new orange seal ceramic bearings I have. These, you're going to want to put direct pressure to make sure the bearings go in straight. I can use my thumb. If you don't want to use your finger for whatever reason, maybe your uh, hubs are a little tighter than mine, you can use the back of a screwdriver also to put direct pressure to make sure they're nice and flush. Okay, then at this point, you go ahead and put the spacer back in and then the opposite bearing. Okay, these go in pretty good. Again, make sure they're nice and tight. And if you need to, you can use a screwdriver to tap on it. Make sure it's in there good. Okay, I went ahead and already did the opposite um, wheel hub. So both of these are done. I'm not going to install the axles right now and the rear wheels because I need to go ahead and remove the transmission. Okay. Okay, guys, uh, I'm going to go ahead and remove my pinion in my spur gear now. Again, for the pinion, it's a 1.5 millimeter um, Allen wrench. I went ahead and loosened it already. Okay, nothing there. All right, and then for the uh, spur itself, you can use the uh, multi wrench that came with the truck. Now again, I've done a modification on this truck to where I'm using a 32 pitch spur from a Traxxas truck and this allows me to uh, use the dual pad slipper plus 32 pitch so it's a little easier for me um, and I can make sure that my gears won't strip when I put a lot of power on from the brushless system. Okay, What I did for my mod here is I went ahead and used a 5 millimeter by 11 millimeter bearing. I'm going to go ahead and change that out as well. You just push it out with my finger. And that's another one that they sent me in the kit. So I'm going to go ahead and install that. And then just put that off to the side for the time being. I'm going to go ahead and uh, reposition the truck and show you how to take the transmission out and we'll go from there. Okay, the next step is going to be to take the motor 
off the motor plate so we can get to the transmission. Uh, it's a 2.5 millimeter Allen wrench. I've already pre-loosened them just a little bit. and go ahead and back these the rest of the way out. And then there's going to be six Phillips head screw uh, screws holding on the transmission onto the back of the truck. So go ahead and take the screws out, put them off to the side again. If you guys notice, I use a towel on my workbench here, work table, um, so that way all the parts don't slip and slide as I uh, go through this. Uh, had a bad experience a long time ago where I was using a flat table and uh, I lost an important screw from one of my RC projects which was my uh, Emacs back in the day. And uh, Needless to say I was a little frustrated because I couldn't find it. Anyways, so the motor comes right off the plate. I'll just go ahead and fold it over the side here. I've got it tied to where I can do that. And then we're going to get to the back of the truck, which is the transmission back here. Now you're going to notice we've got two Phillips head screws right here. All right, I'm going to go ahead and take off the motor housing itself, the motor guard back here. And there's also a few um, screws back here. And these are held on. Uh, this is the uh, T Bone Racing bumper. So I went ahead and used the screws that came with that, and those are actually Allen wrench screws as well. Usually on the truck, they are actually Phillips head, but I've got Allen wrench here because I've got an aftermarket bumper from T Bone Racing. I'm going to go ahead and take these four out, and then the ones up top here as well. And I'll go ahead and uh, start the camera again after that. 